Uh, hello everyone. Today I would like to ta uh, talk about how AI is slowly taking over the various tasks in the household. Uh, my name is Damla Welty and I'm a student from ETH currently pursuing my Bachelor in Electrical Engineering and IT. Okay. A uh, domestic robot is a machine that executes different tasks in the household. For this, it must understand and interact with its environment. It coexists with people in their homes and makes everyday life for people easier. It is autonomous. That means it has the ability to make its own decision and then perform an action accordingly without external influence. And it is mostly Wi-Fi connected. Domestic robots can be used for different household cores. They can uh, perform tasks like, for example, floor cleaning, or they can clean your window, or um, this machine is used for ironing, or there are a lot of machines uh, which can be used for lawn mowing. Uh, there are a lot more, and I'm sure there are many more to follow. Uh, domestic robots also includes robots which are used for surveillance. Uh, there are robots that can be used for home security or they can monitor your pets or your baby. Uh, domestic robots also include uh, entertainment and companionship. Uh, for example, there are like robotic pets or uh, healthcare robots, which we already heard about, or even sex robots. But since this is a huge topic for itself, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna, gonna dive further into them and uh, exclude them from my analysis. Uh, stakeholder, or let's say people with an interest of domestic uh, robots, for me, they can be divided into th uh, three different categories. Um, first one you probably think about is the consumers. Uh, the primary user who owns the robot and all people or even animals who live in the same house as them, uh, they could be internal consumers. External consumers, on the other hand, would be their uh, guests or their neighbors. They do not have any influence on the robots. They can only observe them as outsiders. Uh, the next category are the producers of the domestic robots. They consist of researchers, designers, manufacturers, sales, marketing, and support. And as final category, there are the rule makers. These include federal, state, and local government agencies. There are a lot of ethical concern for AI in general. Um, I would like to uh, I would like to you to understand that domestic robots can also raise some of them. The perception of robots by humans is uh, very important for uh, like robot addicts, and this is uh, the same for domestic robots. Uh, one must acknowledge that a robot is a machine. That means they don't, they don't, ha uh, they don't have a consciousness or free will. Yet there is a strong social or emotional component in the human robotic uh, interactions. Um, robots can be embedded with human like gestures or facial expressions, which encourage people to interact with, uh, interact socially with them. Uh, for instance, they talk to robots as if they have uh, emotions or, and feelings. And with that, they um, might, might start to believe that robots have properties which they do not possess. And uh, because of this, they may move away from reality. The future could cause that people may prefer relationships with the robots to real relationships um, invo involving uh, moral responsibilities. And this could also have an impact on relationships we still have with uh, humans or even animals. We could lose uh, patience or empathy um, towards them. Uh, with that said, I would like to go over to the societal challenges um, a domestic robot has. Uh, using uh, robots for domestic pur purposes means that they will enter into our per personal spaces. Um, there will be a change in responsibilities and roles of the household members. For example, there will be not a housewife anymore, like everybody um, in the household can request a robot to do something. So this causes a shift in practices and creates a new way of living. 
Uh, also, if we depend too much on technology and the machines do everything for us, uh, life could become quite dull. And um, bonds from the user uh, to the robot may uh, provoke uh, psychological dependencies for the user. And for me, I think most importantly, like all, um, um, also the need for human skills uh, decreases when robots do everything faster and more accurate than us. Um, I would like to show you now an invention that is going to be launched this year. Um, I'm really wondering what you think about it. At first, when I saw this invention, I was like fascinated. But then I started to think, okay, what if cooking becomes only mechanical? Uh, what if humans completely lost their ability at some point of cook, uh, cooking? Uh, it will be really, really hard to take over if the technology fails. This or similar inventions could have a huge impact on how we interact with the world around us. Another social challenge would be what other people think about you. Uh, on the pot positive sides, um, families which adopt domestic robots can be seen as modern since they are like open for technology. Uh, as a negative effect, people may be marked as lazy because they don't do the tasks themselves anymore. And also families could be seen as rich since domestic robots are kind of a luxury, not a necessity. Uh, money is an important factor when it comes to domestic robots, and this would lead me to the next challenge, which is uh, the economy. Uh, okay, uh, whether um, robots will harm or help the economy is a difficult and ongoing debate. In the case of domestic robots, the following is believed to happen. Uh, the International Labour uh, Office estimates that there are at least 67 million domestic workers, of which 80% are women. In uh, Latin America, domestic work is 14% uh, of the fee total female uh, um, employment. In Asia, it's a little bit less. So that means uh, domestic work is an important source of income for women in Asia and Latin America. Mostly they work for the wealthier families. So if those families would replace their maids, cooks, gardeners, and so on by domestic robots, this could re uh, result in a critical unemployment rise. One can argue now, of course, that there will be new work uh, spaces created in robotic companies, but maybe it, uh, it is required to have a higher education to work in uh, one of those companies. Uh, for people who can afford uh, ro uh, domestic robots, it can be a positive push. Um, robots could uh, take care of their homes, children, or even pets. And this can result that more women can acquire a paid job outside um, the home. This would also mean uh, more income in the families. So as we see, not all members of our society will benefit from domestic robots. Um, certain professions may disappear. In any case, the nature of uh, work will most likely change. Um, I would like to talk about now some political challenges a domestic robot can cause. Um, privacy is the, one of the most important factors of the life in every human being. So if you want a domestic robot in your house, it needs to access a lot of private data to work well. Uh, for example, this is a now, it's a household robot that can understand speech and listen, and it can process it as well. This means like human privacy could be compromised since it listens to every discussion, phone call, it can read your emails, and also it could transfer these data back to the software engineers. Uh, even if there are regulations, robots can always be hacked. It might be possible um, to track a, a person moving close to the robot. Therefore, it could be uh, used, for example, uh, in government buildings or in private homes of politicians to spy and uh, could leak uh, valuable information. Uh, this could cause international security threat. 
um, robots can always uh, malfunction, malfunction and this can lead to accidents. Uh, there was a case in Korea in 2015 where a 52 year old woman um, was taking a nap on the floor and her vacuum cleaner somehow turned on and sucked her hair up. It was probably like mistaking it for dust. Um, in 2018, there was a case in Finland where a cat was injured by a robotic uh, lawnmower. Um, also last year in Albuquerque, New Mexico, a robot vacuum cleaner got stuck uh, to a floor heater and ended up melting and this caused a fire in the house. So another risk I already mentioned before is that when a robot is hacked, um, it could be reprogrammed to hurt family members if, for example, it could grab a sharp object or so. Um, the robot could also um, be used to collect private uh, information and then be used for a blackmail. Or it could unlock the door or even turn down the security system and allowing the bad guys in. This could lead to burglary, kidnapping, or even murder. Okay, uh, let, let's look at the whole subject from a value sensitive design approach. Um, VSD has uh, three investigation types. The first one is the conceptual with the main goal of understanding the users where we define the stakeholders and their values. So uh, for the design of a domestic robot, it is important to make sure that the design respects the cultural differences and the moral values. Also the user's privacy and its safety, um, the av availability, and that it's responsed only to the commands from authorized users. The second investigation is empirical with the main goal of collecting data. Um, for domestic robots, it is important to collect data from users before and during the design. And the last type is defining the technology, um, like based off the findings of the conceptual and the empirical um, investigations. And it is important that domestic robots are based on the needs of the household. Okay, so yeah, today we saw that, a lot, uh, that domestic robots bring a lot of risks along. As my conclusion, I have a request for the robotic companies. Um, we saw earlier that domestic robots has high demands on security mechanisms. Uh, robotic companies should uh, ensure the best possible security mechanism to prevent abuse and provide safety. And even though the developers have probably the best intentions in mind, it is very important to understand that um, others could have possible um, abuse in, in mind. Um, it is also important for the robotic companies to work together with the, uh, with the government um, because they are the ones that can modify or create the right kind of regulations. And since these domestic robots collect a lot of private data, it is important that the data is protected. And finally, for us as possible users of domestic robots, we should always have the following in mind. Uh, we should create a correct perception of what robots are, how they work, and what uh, exactly they are or are not capable of doing in a domestic um, environment. Um, we should uh, also not entirely rely on technology since it could lead to laziness, boredom, or the loss of human skills. Um, for example, when you saw the video about the robotic kitchen, like, would you really want one? Or I don't know, like, don't you like to cook yourself and improve your skills by doing so? And the most important of all, we should be, uh, we should not underestimate these machines. We should uh, be aware of the possible dangers they bring along with themselves. Okay, thank you for listening. And yeah, I have here my sources, but yeah, I guess, okay.